In the linked video, it was shown that a minimum number of 17 teeth is required to avoid undercutting on an involute gear with a standard pressure angle of 20 degrees. However, if gears are to be manufactured below this limit number of teeth, for example because a certain transmission ratio is to be achieved, the undercut must be avoided in another way. This is achieved by a so-called profile shift. Such a profile shift is explained in more detail in this video. The animation shows the manufacturing process with a hob cutter for a gear with eight teeth. The undercutting of the teeth by the rack-shaped tool profile can be clearly seen. With the profile shift, the tool profile is now shifted outwards by a certain amount during gear manufacturing. The animation shows the effect on the tooth shape. It is evident that as the profile shift increases, the undercut decreases and can even be avoided completely. Even if it is not obvious at first glance, all gears have the same tooth profile. This becomes clear when the teeth are placed on top of each other. All teeth have an involute tooth profile with the same base circle. Only a different part of the same involute is used for power transmission. The involute shape is ultimately only determined by the inclination of the cutting edges of the rack-shaped tool profile. And because the angle of the cutting edges does not change with the profile shift, the base circle, and therefore the involute, does not change. Therefore, profile shifted gears, also known as corrected gears, can easily mesh with non-profile shifted gears, provided they were manufactured with the same rack shape tool and therefore not only have the same tooth profile, but also the same module. The circular pitches P0 on the pitch circle of profile shifted gears are also identical to those of non-profile shifted gears. At this point we recommend that you watch the linked video on racks. There we discuss the meshing of a rack with a gear in detail. We can now apply the knowledge gained in that video here, as the tool profile of the hob is basically the same as that of a rack. It was shown that the position of the pitch point does not change even when the profile is shifted. This is due to the fact that the movement of the rack-shaped tool profile is a translational motion, the speed of which is independent of the radial position relative to the gear and therefore independent of the profile shift. This also results in the same pitch circle, on which the rotational speed is equal to the translational speed of the tool profile. The pitch point is determined as the intersection of the vertical center line of the gear with the line of action. The line of action runs tangential to the base circle of the gear and perpendicular to the tool flank, which is inclined at the standard pressure angle alpha zero. This clearly defines the pitch point C. Both the pitch line of the tool and the pitch circle of the gear during gear cutting, which is therefore also referred to as the manufacturing pitch circle, run through the pitch point. On this manufacturing pitch circle, which remains the same regardless of the profile shift, the circular pitch P0 of the teeth is obtained, which is given by the distance between the teeth of the rack-shaped tool profile. This means that the manufacturing pitch circle ultimately corresponds to the standard reference pitch circle. Since a profile shift has no effect on a manufacturing pitch circle and thus on the resulting reference pitch circle and the associated circular pitch, profile shifted gears can easily mesh with non-profile shifted gears. Let's take a closer look at the effects of the profile shift on the geometry of the gear. The profile shift V is usually expressed as a percentage of the module. The corresponding decimal value is referred to as the profile shift coefficient X. With a positive profile shift coefficient, the tool profile is shifted outwards away from the gear. With a negative coefficient, it is shifted inwards towards the gear. A profile shift coefficient of X equals plus 0.25, for example, means that the tool profile is shifted outwards by 0.25 times the module. Both the root radius and the tip radius usually increase by the amount of the profile shift. For gears without a profile shift, also known as standard gears, the calculation of the addendum circle diameter DA0 and the addendum circle diameter DD0 has already been explained in the video on the geometry of involute gears. These result from the module M and the number of teeth Z is shown, whereby a clearance C is taken into account for the root diameter. It can now be seen that the tip and root radii are increased by the value of the profile shift V for corrected gears. The corresponding diameters therefore increase by twice the value of the profile shift. If we express the profile shift by the product of the profile shift coefficient and the module, we obtain the shown equations for calculating the tip and root diameters. Note that these equations also take into account a negative profile shift. In this case, the negative value must be used as the profile shift coefficient x. For standard gears without profile shift, a coefficient of x equals 0 applies. A profile shift also affects the tooth thickness and the tooth space width on the reference pitch circle. 
Note that due to the rolling motion without sliding, the tooth thickness on the reference pitch circle corresponds to the distance between the cutting edges of the tool on the pitch line. The increase in tooth thickness with profile shift is therefore the result of an increase in the distance between the tool flanks on the pitch line. Compared with uncorrected gears, whose tooth thickness S0 is equal to half the circular pitch P0 or half the product of the number pi and the module M, the tooth thickness of a profile shifted gear increases by twice the value delta S shown. The right angled triangle marked in blue can be used to determine the increase in tooth thickness as a function of the profile shift V and the tangent of the standard pressure angle alpha 0 as shown. If the profile shift V is again expressed by the product of the profile shift coefficient X and the module M, the formula shown is obtained. We can simplify this equation somewhat and finally obtain the specified formula for calculating the tooth thickness S0 on the reference pitch circle of a profile shifted gear. Again, it should be noted that this equation also applies to non-profile shifted gears with a profile shift coefficient of X equals 0. While the tooth thickness S0 on the reference pitch circle increases by the term shown in red, the tooth space width E0 decreases by the same amount. The formula shown therefore applies to the calculation of the tooth space width E0 on the reference pitch circle. The larger tooth thickness on the reference pitch circle of profile shifted gears compared to standard gears increases the tooth stability accordingly. At the same time however, the tooth tip thickness SA on the addendum circle is reduced. However, if the tooth tip thickness is too small, there is a risk that the tooth tip will break. To avoid this, the tip diameter of the addendum circle must be reduced to maintain a certain tip thickness and therefore tip stability. The tip diameter should be reduced so that the tip thickness is at least 0.2 times the module. Even with the gear shown with 8 teeth, the tip diameter would have to be reduced in order to maintain the minimum tooth tip thickness. For gears with less than 7 teeth, the tooth profile would even taper before reaching the theoretical tip diameter due to the profile shift. The animation shows a non-profile shifted gear with 6 teeth in red and a profile shifted gear in green, where the profile shift was adjusted so that no undercut occurs. You can clearly see that the tooth flanks taper before reaching the theoretical tip diameter. In addition, the tip circle diameter would have to be shortened considerably to maintain the minimum tooth tip thickness. However, shortening the tip circle in this way will result in a significant reduction in the length of the line of contact, as this is limited by the tip circle. For this reason, involute gears with less than 8 teeth should generally be avoided. The meshing of profile shifted gears will be discussed in detail later. The tooth thickness S on any diameter D can be calculated using the given formula. Where S0 is the tooth thickness on the reference pitch circle and D0 is its diameter. The term marked in blue is the so-called involute function of the standard pressure angle alpha 0. The value of the involute function for the standard pressure angle must be determined as indicated. The angles in the involute function must always be used in radians. For a standard pressure angle of 20 degrees, this results in a value of 0.349 in radians. To calculate the tooth thickness, the value of the involute function for the angle alpha must also be determined. This term, marked in red, is calculated in the same way as the previous calculation. However, here the angle alpha is to be determined as specified using the reference pitch circle diameter D0 and the diameter D on which the tooth thickness is to be determined. For the indicated cosine term, the standard pressure angle alpha zero must again be used. The angle alpha must also be determined in radians. Finally, the given formulas can also be used to determine the tooth tip thickness SA on the addendum circle. All you need to do is use the diameter DA of the addendum circle. In this way, it is possible to check whether a tip shortening is necessary or not. The derivation of the formulas shown is explained in more detail in another video. In the following, we will take a closer look at the meshing of profile shifted gears in comparison to standard gears. First, let's take a closer look at the center distance. At first glance, you might think that the center distance of profile shifted gears changes by the amount of the profile shift, since the gear has become larger by that amount. However, if you increase the center distance of the corrected green gear by the amount of the profile shift, you will notice that there is now a slight backlash. This is due to the fact that profile shifted gears use a part of the involute further out as the tooth profile. This means that the tooth profile curves away before it touches the tooth of the opposite gear. To achieve backlash-free meshing, the gears must be moved together slightly. This reduces the center distance a little. At the same time, however, 
Bringing them together also reduces the clearance between the tooth tip and the tooth root. This, in turn, may make it necessary to shorten the tip circle in order to maintain a certain tip clearance. The previous statements referred to a positive profile shift in which the gear becomes larger. Such a gear is then also referred to as a V-plus gear. In principle, the opposite effect occurs with a negative profile shift. The center distance is reduced compared to an uncorrected standard gear. Such a gear is then also referred to as a V-minus gear. The center distance of gears can therefore be adjusted in one direction or the other by using a profile shift. Profile shifts are often used for this reason. A profile shift also affects the line of contact and the operating pressure angle. This is shown by comparing the meshing of the red standard gear and the green V-plus gear. A positive profile shift increases the distance between the base circles. As a result, the line of action tangent to the base circles becomes flatter, which increases the operating pressure angle. The animation shows that the line of contact of the profile shifted gear is significantly greater than that of the uncorrected gear due to the avoidance of the undercut. At this point, the question arises as to which profile shift is necessary for a gear with too few teeth in order to avoid an undercut. Let's take a look at how the reference profile engages the gear during gear cutting. At this point, we would like to refer explicitly to the video on undercuts. It was already explained there that the reference profile shown does not take into account any tooth tip clearance, and therefore the tooth height corresponds to twice the module. The pitch line of the reference profile runs at half height. The pitch circle of the gear touches the pitch line at the pitch point C. The line of action runs perpendicular to the flanks of the reference profile and is tangent to the base circle of the gear wheel at point B. The meshing starts at intersection point A, between the line of action and the tip circle of the gear and ends at intersection point E, between the line of action and the tip line of the reference profile, whereby the gear is undercut by the reference profile from point B. Therefore, to avoid an undercut, the start of the undercut at point B must be outside the line of contact AE. In the limiting case where undercut is just avoided, point B coincides exactly with the end of the line of contact at point E. The tool profile must therefore be shifted so that the end of contact at point E coincides with the tangent point B. Note that such a shift in the tool profile has no effect on the position of the line of action and the pitch point. The corresponding profile shift coefficient x can now be determined from the resulting geometric relationships for a given standard pressure angle alpha zero. Let's take a look at the orange-colored right-angled triangle. The angle shown corresponds to the standard pressure angle alpha zero. The opposite cathetus of this angle results from the difference between the module M and the profile shift V. This means that the stated relationship applies to the distance CB. At this point, the profile shift is again expressed by the product of the profile shift coefficient and the module. This gives us the shown equation. We can also determine the distance CB in another way. Let's take a look at the blue triangle. The distance CB is calculated as indicated from the pitch circle radius R0 or half the pitch circle diameter D0 and the sine of the standard pressure angle alpha 0. The pitch circle diameter is expressed by the module M and the number of teeth Z. This gives the shown equation. The two equations for the distance CB can now be equated and solved for the required profile shift coefficient x. The result is the formula given. At this point, we can make use of the fact that the term marked in green corresponds to the reciprocal of the minimum number of teeth z min in order to avoid an undercut. The derivation of this minimum number of teeth has already been shown in the video on the undercut. For an involute gear with a standard pressure angle of 20 degrees, this limiting number of teeth is theoretically 17. The profile shift coefficient x required to avoid the undercut can therefore be determined as shown. For a gear with 8 teeth, this profile shift coefficient is 0.53. In practice, a slight undercut can often be accepted without major negative effects, so in these cases a minimum number of teeth of Zeman equals 14 is usually used. It should be noted that the profile shift coefficient becomes negative for a number of teeth greater than the minimum number of teeth. This means that a negative profile shift is theoretically possible without an undercut. In addition to avoiding an undercut or specifically influencing the center distance, the profile shift has another advantage. As already explained in the linked video on the design of involute gears, the radius of curvature of the involute increases with increasing length, which means that the further the involute is from the base circle, 
the larger the radius of curvature and the less strongly the involute is curved. The reduced curvature results in a larger contact surface of the contacting tooth, which reduces the contact pressure, also known as Hertzian contact pressure. This reduces the load on the teeth and increases the load-bearing capacity. Finally, let's summarize the most important statements once again. We can state that a profile shift is used when an undercut is to be avoided, tooth stability is to be increased or the center distance is to be adjusted. A positive profile shift leads to an increase in the root and tip circle, to a wider tooth root and at the same time, to a narrower tooth tip. In addition, the tooth thickness on the reference pitch circle increases and the tooth space width decreases accordingly. The surface pressure is reduced by the part of the involute tooth profile that is further out. Both the base circle diameter and the reference pitch circle diameter do not change with a profile shift. With a negative profile shift, the effects mentioned are exactly the opposite. Due to the many positive effects, a positive profile shift is generally recommended.